Hey guys, um, I haven't made a video in a while, so I'm going to do this, not um, unboxing, but it is going to be a first look. Uh, the vacuum that I'm showing you today is a Westinghouse Unplugged, which was um, Westinghouse, their version of a Phantom Wildcat. And I know the Phantom Wildcats are getting fairly hard to find. So when I saw this at a, I can't remember what it's called. It was like a big auction place for $25, complete with the two batteries and the charger. I snapped it up. I figured even if the batteries packed are dead, which they are, um, you can get the new batteries for them. And like um, the new battery cells. And just resolder the battery packs back together so they work. So I'm just going to do that, and then I'll have a working uh, unplugged. But we'll go around the machine. I'll show you all the stuff that I know about it. Um, and I will say this: I there was originally enough uh, juice in the battery that you could push the on button; it would go into the standby mode. And you can release the handle, and it like beeps like it's going to start up, but the battery pack's too dead to start it. Uh, I don't think it has enough power anymore, which it does not. Maybe it was that one over there, but I'm starting to tear them apart. But um, you can release it, and it st it'll start to activate, and then it shuts down, and you can pull the hose off, and it starts activating by that. So, from what I know of this vacuum uh, we'll go from top to bottom it has this cool offset handle design um, <coughs> there's the power button and then mine says power saver I'm not sure if this was an earlier version or what but I know most of them say brush I'm I believe this is the on off button for the brush but again the batteries are dead so I can't I don't know uh, this has a HEPA filter. It says that it has a four-stage filter uh, system. This is the last of it, and it has this little foam-type seal. So I'm suspecting that'll be half decent when it's being used. Let me see if I can get this cover back in place. I always put it. Um, it always does this. I'll figure it out later. Um, so Westinghouse on the front. The motor is actually right in here. It's right above the dirt cup like it is on the new Hoover Air that came out. Now I got all the attachments with it. A very soft dusting brush which will be really awesome to use when uh, when it's usable. I also have the uh, probably I believe they called it the all-purpose nozzle which is pretty much just the upholstery tool it has decently stiff brushes but you can the only thing that I won't like about these tools and I can already tell that I won't like it is that you can't really do much scrubbing with it or else it'll like it looks like it might screw up the bristles maybe you can do like a little side to side thing to really get in but these are decently stiff um, now I will say that both of these have this little button right here and I'll take this one off. I'll fix it later, but you can actually take this off. It has this hole in it. I suspect possibly it was if the brushes get wore down, especially on the dusting brush. Once they start to wear down, they might get a little stiffer. You can take it out, and you're probably you probably could have bought uh, new brush uh, brushes and put those in. But sometimes it goes right in in one shot. If it does, excellent. Otherwise. It will not be fixed on video, or on camera. Oh, Snap together this time. Excellent. So, now it has the uh, a very unique kind of crevice tool. It has this, like a little, um, I don't know what you call that, a little grade to it. So you can like get up into corners and you still have suction. Like you put it down and you'd still have the suction coming through. But it also has this little cut down in the bottom. And it looks like the cut is probably like a factory 
Uh, done deal. Uh, but that stores on board. It has a really nice uh, hose. To get to the hose, it's stored right by the handle. You just push this button down and it pops it out. Now, this is like a Dyson hose in which you have to pull out your wand to get the hose flexible. But I measured this when this this is telescoped. The hose is at, uh, I believe, four each. And this secondary uh, hose is telescoped, which it is right now. Let me lock it in place because there's this little lock thing on it. I've measured eight feet that it can totally reach. But uh, it claims in the book or the manual that I saw online that this is a nine and a half foot um, reach. Now, one question that I have to anybody that owns this machine, I've heard that this little thing right here was a um, cord storage hook that they just never bothered to take off of the design being that they just got the patents for it, uh, Westinghouse, just directly from Phantom. I've heard that that's what this is. But then when I look at uh, Phantom Wildcats, the uh, cord does not store on here. So does anybody know what this is? Is it like to go out so you have more to hold on to? Or like, cause I mean, I can maybe see like doing this so you have better reach or something. I don't know. If anybody knows what this does, uh, leave it in the comments, please. It would be much appreciated. So then... You just twist this, and there, like that, and then this hose, if I can get it, this metal wand sticks down, and then you lift it up, and it does that little click. Not a very solid click, but a click nonetheless. Now, in the back, you have these battery packs, which I've opened up. I've opened up that one over there. I still have to get the batteries, but it is com uh, it has, I believe, a dozen NICAD D size batteries, and it also has this 25, um, 25. I'm not sure if it's a volt or an amp. I'm not really the electronic type guy. But it, I believe it's a 25 volt amp or something, something like that. It's a 25 something electrical amp, something. But it has that for a fuse. So you, um, there's this little thing on the charger, which I'll, I'll talk about later, but it tells you if you have a blown fuse or whatnot. But, back to the vacuum. Uh, going down a little more, you have your single cyclonic filter bucket, or not filter, but the cyclone dirt bucket. Now, this was very clean when I got it. I didn't have to do any wet uh, washing, spray wash, nothing like that at all. I just took an air compressor and blew out all the contents. Um, but pretty much from what I've seen how this uh, this particular cyclone unit operates. The dirt goes in at the bottom with the corresponding hole. There's that little hole right there. I'll tilt the uh, handle back so you can see it better because I'm... I don't know if you guys can see it or not. There's that little hole right there. So, air is sucked up through here, which is the motor is right under here, so that corresponds with that. Air is sucked out from that mesh thing, drawn up this tube, which then goes into this, which in turn spins your dust, and for the fine particles, uh, any sand that this would happen to get out, uh, which it has a really soft brush roll, so I'm not sure much of that would be, uh, would go in here, but for your dust, your light powdery stuff, they have this, what they call a dirt arrester, as it, the dirt and stuff is spinning in here, it would filter out the fine dust and go down in here. And then when you go to open this up, you just twist this open like this. There's no quick release bin. And then uh, you have your whole bin. 
you have your normal contents and then when you dump this out those two little flaps open up and all your dirt from the dirt arrestor is supposed to just fall out now I saw a video on uh, Phantom Vacuum Fan's channel and I believe he might he had it was either his uh, crosswind model which it was a phantom crosswind it was either that or maybe it was his wildcat but his dirt arrestor on the single cyclone unit was sticking I believe I'm not sure which flap was sticking but only one of them would open up and he said that it just kinda it was a bothersome pain in the butt to get clean so I hope this model or this uh, particular one doesn't do that oh I was going to show you okay so like I said I hope this one doesn't do that but so your it says four stage filter or filtration I'm just going to go over this front thing real quick and then get to the filtration. But it's uh, the unplugged. It shows you your power packs, which is all it's called. It was <clears throat> is what they're calling their batteries. Cord free vacuum. Um, it says it cleans like a corded upright without the cord. Uh, tells you that it includes the charger right there and two. Uh, batteries. The one is already in the unit, and the other one's torn up over there. It has a suction motor and a uh, brush roll motor. That's why you can shut off the brush roll. And it says the four-stage filtration system, which I'll show you. And they actually warranted the HEPA filter, which is the one that I showed you on the top. They warranted it for seven years. And it says you can go anything or go anywhere, do anything with the telescoping wand and the onboard tools. So that's that. So now I'm going to show you. Hopefully, I'll be able to open all this stuff up. But so your first level of filtration is just this fine mesh. Um, it's just a fine mesh filter. Uh, just kind of uh, captures the larger particles from getting into your more fine filters that's right outside of this which could definitely be a flaw because you're gonna have dirt whizzing right past this and if the suction is as strong as some people say it is I could definitely imagine this getting caked with dirt which I did see when I got this home it was used and it was caked with dirt so that could possibly be a flaw now on this top you push down this little button and then you can uh, spin this and this is pretty much like most of the Dyson filters in which you have this uh, foam filter setting right above the uh, cyclone well normally on Dyson's it's a multi cyclonic at least a two cyclone so but this is all you have on the Westinghouse but this is your foam filter which I washed and it came uh, very very clean I'm very impressed at how well this cleaned up and then you actually have this which is a pleated filter now most companies call just a pleated filler filter a HEPA filter but this vacuum actually has two pleated filters I'm not sure if they if at the end of the filtration if it is up to HEPA standards but you do get two pleated filters so you have your mesh filter which is your first stage foam second this pleated filter is the third and then your final exhaust which I showed you by taking off this cap that's your last stage the fourth in the filtration system so I'll just pack this down and now all of these have lock and unlock and then a corresponding little arrow so I found that it's easier to get this uh, back on than it is to take off so you just kinda line it up and try to get it to go in let me see line it up right under unlocked somewhere around in there please go in oh this is gonna be fun doing this one handed <laughs> normally this isn't uh, too difficult but being that I only have one hand and it looks like my camera needs refocused which autofocus is not doing a very good job right now hmm has those 
supposed to be able to put those right there, like that. Obviously, one of them is not lining up or something. Typically, this isn't this difficult. I'm not sure why everything has to be so much more difficult on camera. I mean, you could have, like, a gem of a machine. No problems, no nothing in real life. You turn on a camera and the darn thing acts like it's a $20 Bissell. Okay, I'm going to pause the video and try to put this back together with two hands, and then we will continue. Well, it has literally been 30 seconds, and I figured out what I was doing wrong. I was trying to line it up with this. This is the bin lock for that. I was supposed to be using that. So let me see when I place this over, over your, the little arrows. Ah, just like that. It really helps when you're using the right locks, or little right locking uh, pictures. But that goes right together like that. Um, then, you put this, this little thing right over this dirt tube in your collection bin. And it just slides on like that. There's your unlocked right there. And then with a quick, easy turn, locked back in place. Now, one thing that I find, I'm, I'm not saying it's a bad thing, I'm not saying it's a good thing, I'm just saying that it's something uh, that I really haven't seen with anything else, is on this you have this little tiny channel that corresponds with this, and you really can't see it, it's just a little tiny wedge of plastic that goes in there. Sometimes if you have it, like, just cockeyed enough, it just won't fit in there right, so... Just something to note. Um, try to get it on just right. You can depress that. See if that does anything. There. So now that's uh, flipped back in. Now going down this vacuum even more. You have this cool uh, wheel. These cool wheels. Normally vacuum wheels are like stuck right there. But these actually come out. And they're fairly large wheels. Now they're not coated with like... Um, a rubber material or anything they're just plastic um but i assume for like something like this kind of carpet which is really low cut uh they'd probably be good for that um but getting down to the brush roll now this will be fun because this is a spring assisted uh floor nozzle that's what I was trying to think of. Once you get it down so far like this, it won't really pop up until you go there. But that's just because of all the tools and stuff kind of lifts it up. But when you try to spin it, it tries to suck the cleaner head back up. So I'm going to have to... Ooh, that's not good. I'm trying to keep from doing putting too much strain on the handle. Because I heard that these wild cats... Well, especially the Wildcat models, but we're prone to handle damage. Like I said, that's spring-assisted, so it just sucks it right back up. I'll put it back down. Like, when I rotate it over, you just push on this pedal, and then the brush roll thing comes down like that. It'll probably suck back up a little bit, but again, it is what it is. Now... Let me look and see. I can never get a good um, visual on this. Mostly because it's all dark and black down there. So let me see if I can pull that into the light a little bit better. But let me see what I can show you. This has a chevron style brush. It has two ro rows of bristles. The only problem is that these bristles are very long. There, you can really see it. Um, they're very long. They're very soft. They're almost as soft. Not as soft as the duster brush. But they are very, very soft. As you can hear. They're very soft. So... They're not going to give you a deep down clean by any means whatsoever. 
but it is something. In fact, these bristles right here are so soft that Westinghouse even put in their manual, you can leave these on for getting the dust and stuff off of hardwood flooring because, like I said, they are very soft. So, uh, under here, these machines were prone to clogging. So, they made a very easy, um, it's a two-panel thing. You just take this panel that has little plastic clips. You take that, it just comes right off. It just kind of sits in a couple grooves with these two push-down clips. Then you take this little panel out, which I, I think they call this something, but... Uh, all it really is is just a panel. This is like a big clog clean out port. And if I can tip the camera, maybe do a little tipping. I'll try to see if I can find where that suction channel is. It should be it's back here somewhere. I'll find it. Uh, uh <laughs> I am blind or something because I can't see it. That's funny. Now, I know this thing has suction. I'm definitely sure of that. But I am having difficulties finding the actual suction inlet. I'm not sure where they placed it. So let me try. I hope I still have my... Flashlight, which I don't, so let's go on a journey and find a flashlight. Possibly in my sister's room. Uh, sometimes she has a flashlight in here, which I do not think she does. I know there's one in the kitchen, so. Let me see, will this one work? Nope, it's dead. So, ah, that's disappointing. We will find a flashlight that works. Okay guys, so I just, just I paused the video for a moment, try to find a flashlight, which I did eventually find. But I'm not seeing, oh, it's right there. So, that's all the bigger your suction port is, which I mean it is, the brush brushes right there, they're angled to throw dirt straight back, but that's kind of offset, so, I'm not sure if that'll really matter much, but, you can fit like two fingers, and if you're going to leave a pervy comment about this, please just shut up now, okay, back to that, but, you can only get like two, like, it's really a tiny, inlet port so maybe that's why the suction on this machine is considered strong because it is concentrated so much strong for a cordless vacuum of course but that is <coughs> that's that but I've seen where people do like tests with paper which isn't the best thing to use but like this whole thing just fills to the brim with paper. You'd think that it was like a manual carpet sweeper because it just throws all that stuff right in that trough. Then you have to take this off and clean all this, clean all that out. But when I got this, there was actually some sand and stuff laying in the bottom of this. So someone must have been like sweeping a sandbox or something because I cannot imagine these bristles picking that, uh, any sand really at all out of a carpet. But, I haven't used it yet, so I really can't say definitely how well it'll work. I will say this has a static, um, static height of the nozzle. It doesn't really move up and down that much. There's, like, nothing spring-loaded or anything about these. They're just flush. So, there, there's six of them on the cleaner. On the cleaner itself, there's these two large main wheels. Then these, there's these small, tiny flashlight, small, tiny wheels. And then there's the really, like, I could hardly even call them wheels. They're like rollers. 
In fact, they're just uh, round pieces of plastic. They don't have any bearings or anything. They're just kind of stuck on a a uh, little metal piece. But that is pretty much as much as I can think of as of right now. And I can see that this video has been running on for about 25 minutes. Just going to take one last glance over the vacuum and um, possibly stop. I will do show you the features about the charger. I might as well do that while we're right here. Now, I'm not sure if this was supposed to be like this or not, but mine is completely speckled in uh, what I believe is white paint. Now, whether or not that's supposed to be like that, I will not know unless somebody that has one of these says yes or no. Definitely so. But this has... This used was supposed to have a little like door or something it like clipped on back here and shut here's the little thing to pop it open but it's missing that but what it ha does have it has this which I'm not sure if you can see or not it's a little filter because this actually blows air through the battery packs they're actually vented if I could pop this one out there. They go in and there's actually vents on them and a vent up here so it blows air through to keep all 12 uh, batteries cool while uh, charging. It claims that it has, sorry if this is a bad camera angle, but it claims to have uh, a 30 minute charge time and each battery is supposed to last 30 minutes they go all the way to claim that if you charge it for 10 minutes it'll run 10 minutes so that's what they are claiming now whether that's true or not I have yet to find out because batteries are dead but I will bring you a video of when I get the batteries done but this uh, it tells you about the the button which is right there now what those two lights mean so there's a conditioning button which upon researching what conditioning batteries was this is like a 24 hour deep charge to charge all the battery cells complete uh... completely because apparently the older Nike had batteries um, they needed that deep charge every once in a while so the top lights the conditioning charge light the bottom light is the 30 minute daily use charge light and then it tells you about the action sequences. So when the your 30 minute charges, uh, when it's charging, uh, the bottom light, which would be that one down there, is supposed to be flashing green. Um, when you're conditioning, the top light flashes green. When the charge is complete, which I I'm not sure if that's just a 30 minute it's probably both of them but then the, it says that the bottom light turns green it also ha goes on for like um, problems with the batteries if the ambient air is too warm or cool both lights will flash so this one will, f will turn on then this one will turn on after that one shuts off it like blinks blinks and then it's done blink blink done um, battery temperature too hot or too cold to uh, charge then it'll go blink, 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 then it'll be done. So, it has low battery voltage, which I'm not sure if that just means you need to do a conditioning charge, or if that means that you've let your batteries go too long and you have to change them. It could mean either one. In that case, the lights will flash three times. And if you blow a fuse, or if one of the battery batteries the cell is damaged it'll do four blinks but that is pretty much it I can show you how these batteries fit in so it's like that so you just take this makes the click then normally I have to keep refocusing you j this light would just turn on you'd hear the fan start up and then it would be just charging the battery and then when it was done the light would turn on you just 
they lock in. So, let me see if I can hold it with my feet and pull it out. They pull out, and these battery, battery packs are fairly heavy. But, then to condition, you just plug it in and push that button right away, and then it goes to town. Um, not much more I can show you. As I said, there's that. Um, but I think I'm pretty much done. So, yeah, I got this for $25 at a place called uh, Rogers in Rogers, Ohio. It's a big uh, auction thing. I don't really know what to call it. But I got it at uh, uh, Rogers. It was at one of the booths for $25 with the batteries and charger and everything all the cleaning tools and it was all really clean except for um, I went over it and did like a polishing on it just because that's what I do with the vacuums and I took the bin out and blew it off with uh, compressed air from an air compressor that's really all the cleaning that needed to be done of course I went over it with uh, some spray and stuff I didn't really need to at all it really wasn't that dirty but just to make sure the polish was would work right cleaned it up all it was was like dusty it wasn't like dirty or anything so I thought that was a pretty good buy for 25 bucks now of course batteries to repack the battery uh, packs will be a little pricey probably around uh, uh, 50 60 bucks but I'll do one pack and if I like it at some point I'll get the batteries for the other one so, my next Westinghouse video, which I'm not sure if that will be my next video, but my next Westinghouse video will be of it running, so I'd say expect that by, uh, by at least the end of the year. I'm not going to say, oh, well, it's gonna, I'm going to upload it next month or something like that. Give it till the end of the year, possibly a little longer, I'm not sure, but it should be done by that time, at least one of the packs to be used. So... That's it for this video, guys. Here is, and that's going to be the end of the Westinghouse Unplugged Overview video. Thanks for watching.